Hold on, hold on. I know half of y'all already ready to vote me off the island for the title of today's episode. But welcome back to Attack on Cowboys. And I'm about to talk to you about why Dallas Cowboys fans should legitimately be excited about tonight's matchup against the Houston Texans. No, it's not because I think we have a chance to win. In fact, it's the exact opposite, and I actually want the opposite to happen, and I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm usually never a proponent of tanking, but when you don't have your starting quarterback and literally everyone is injured, what's your other options, man? What's your other options? Let's get right into it, but first, a word from our sponsors. Big shout out to today's sponsor, BetUS, America's favorite sports book. Using promo code YouTube150, you can sign up now for a 150% sign up first time deposit match bonus, and you'll get 125% match bonus on the next two deposits up to $2,000. You can use BetUS to bet on your favorite NFL matchups, including tonight's Texans versus Cowboys game, where the Texans are a seven point favorite. But again, please be sure to bet responsibly and only gamble if you can afford to. Appreciate BetUS for sponsoring today's episode. Now let's get right back into it. The Dallas Cowboys are taking on the Houston Texans in tonight's Monday night football matchup. The Houston Texans are coming in at 6-4 and four and they're number 4 seed in the AFC currently. And the Cowboys are coming in at 3-6 and six and they're currently the number 14 seed in the NFC. Meaning they're literally one of the worst teams in the entire NFL and one of the worst teams in the NFC. Unfortunately, there's a ton of AFC teams that are worse but i'm going to talk to you about why you should be excited about today's matchup starting from what's actually going to be going on on the field tonight into the future now the thing i think is going to be the most exciting thing to actually go on in tonight's game and the actual game itself is going to be the fact that we get to see our first look at cowboys brand new wide receiver jonathan mingo remember this is the receiver we got for a fourth round pick right at the trade deadline and jerry thought this move was going to do something I i'm honestly not sure why he made this move maybe he saw the value and was like oh this is too good to pass up and go ahead and get this guy i really like him in the draft i don't know but the honestly this was the most pointless trade i have ever seen the dallas cowboys make because they would have been better off just saving that fourth round pick and going into the draft with more picks at this point like y'all were planning to do apparently all off season because that's what it looked like now but Either way, John Domingo will be on the field. So as Cowboys fans, and, and essentially we're looking towards 2025 and beyond. This season, it's, it's a wash. So we get to see what John Domingo looks like out there. And remember, he's going to probably have a combination of Cooper Rush and or Trey Lance throwing to him if Cooper gets killed by the Texans, which I think it's possible. But he's going to have a combination of those guys throwing to him. But we'll get to see what he looks like with the star on the side of his helmet. If there's anything to this guy, if he has a position on his roster going into next season, because you got to think guys like Jalen Brooks, Jalen Tolbert, even maybe a little bit, those guys position next season to me, they aren't guaranteed. And a Jonathan Mingo type of guy could definitely come in and move Jalen Brooks down the roster a little bit, down that depth chart a little bit, right? So let's see what Jonathan Mingo has tonight. I think that's the most worthwhile watching storyline for the Cowboys in the actual game tonight, because as far as anybody else that we're going to be possibly able to watch, it's just not happening. Jordan Lewis has been ruled out. Deron Bland has been ruled out. CeeDee Lamb is now questionable with a back injury. Remember, back injuries are one of those type of things that's very easy to lie about. It's very easy to cap on because it's hard to tell somebody if their back is not actually hurting. A bunch of muscles in your back, easy for something to go wrong back there. So CD is questionable with a back injury. I would be surprised if he actually played for a long time tonight, especially if the game gets out of hand. And honestly, at this point, you might just want to let CD get a style yards because i know he doesn't want to mess that streak up for no reason let him get his thousand yards and then and then start putting cd on ice put cd on ice so we don't mess up his knee or do nothing crazy going into next season and we're already starting behind the eight ball for the 2025 season because now this is the second season in a row where we have lost a major key player down there before the season started. Trevon left really early last season during the time where the defense was really coming out looking like gangbusters initially. And now we're losing Dak and Mike and all these guys. So hopefully we can start 2025 with our full team actually ready to go. Hunter Lepke is doubtful as well, which means he's probably 
not going to play. Zach Martin is actually questionable, and he was limited all week long with a shoulder injury. So Zach Martin is starting to get some injuries piling up on him, and his play is declining a little bit. And remember, this dude did just restructure his contract. So as much as y'all like to talk about, oh, Dak and all these guys, Dak and CD making so much money. They got all this money. They're not producing. Zach Martin just held out for a restructure last season, and no one's talking about the fact that he has completely, completely, completely underperformed after holding out to get more money. I'm just, just going to put that out into the ether because everyone likes to pick on all the other guys, but Zach has just been skating by for free. But I'm just saying, just saying, uh, obviously Dak is going to be out. Nick Vigil is also questionable. And we just have an extremely, extremely long injury report. And this, this game is just, honestly, you want the Texans to beat the brakes off the Cowboys. This isn't a, a Battle of Texas type of thing. This isn't for pride. Texans fans in their right mind can't even act like this game is a, a true indicator of who runs Texas when the Cowboys are going in with half of a team. All right. So as Cowboys fans, this is no skin off of our back. This should be no shot to our ego. We are actually going into this game with house money, y'all. Your emotions should not be affected by this game. In fact, in fact, this may be the most stress-free game that you can watch as a Cowboys fan because you're actually rooting for the other team to win because we want that record to get as low as it possibly can so we can continue to slide down this NFL draft order board, okay? The Cowboys are currently sitting at number nine in the NFL draft. I want the Cowboys to finish the season in the top five, and it's very, very doable. The teams ahead of them only have one less win than they do. So if the Cowboys can lose out, essentially, if they can lose out or at least only win maybe one, maybe two at the most, really just one, honestly. But if they lose out, perfect, 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 because you're going to be putting yourself in position, especially with our strength of schedule. We have one of the highest strength of schedules left out of any of the rest of these teams remaining. The Raiders and the Giants barely have a stronger strength of schedule than us. Outside of that, the Cowboys are playing the most difficult teams remaining out of these top 10 teams in the NFL draft order. So there is a huge chance that they could end up leapfrogging a lot of these teams and end up in the top five and be able to get their hands on Travis Hunter. I'm sold. I'm sold. I wasn't originally sold because he's a podcaster and health wise, a guy that's 6'1, 185, he's a little light in the ass. I feel like he, he could possibly have some health issues in the NFL if he's continuing to want to play both sides of the ball, especially. I think if he does play both sides of the ball in the NFL, it'll look something like him being a number two receiver or a slot receiver, and then he'll come in and play nickel corner or something like that. I don't believe he's going to be one of your primary receivers you're throwing to, and he's going to be one of your main two DBs on the field or your main two corners on the field covering either one of those receivers. I don't think that's going to happen because I just don't know if a human body can withstand that many car crashes over the course of a full NFL season but coming in and playing that nickel spot here and there whenever necessary i can definitely see travis hunter doing that while also contributing to this team as a wide receiver and i think with the dallas cowboys they have so many holes that they need to fill and they're going to be losing jordan lewis this offseason more than likely he signed a one-year deal last offseason he is going to be a free agent this offseason and they're more than likely going to lose him unless they bring him back which i would not be against them bringing back jay Lou because he has been balling for the last couple of years but i can easily see travis hunter coming in and kind of remedying our issue with not having a number two receiver and and taking that spot that J. Lou was in even though the Cowboys use nickel as their base a lot of the time and J. Lou was on the field a lot I could absolutely see Travis Hunter kind of being that guy to step in that position for J. Lou while also contributing on the offensive side of the ball and again the Cowboys have so many holes to fill a guy that can fill two of them at once is honestly really really great value and then obviously you make sure you have some depth behind him just in case he gets nicked up or anything like that but Travis Hunter or, or McMillan the receiver from Arizona or Luther Burden or, or or a weapon the Cowboys need a weapon I know people are inclined to want to build the trenches but golly y'all we've been drafting trenches a whole lot we've been drafting trenches a whole lot in our with our top draft picks over the last few seasons since Dak has been here he's only gotten one receiver one weapon picked in the first round and that's CD Lamb y'all Get this man another first round weapon, bro. Get this man a Luther Burden. Give him a Tedderoy McMillan. Give him a Travis Hunter. Give him another weapon. Like every other quarterback in the league has multiple weapons to throw to. Dak has CD and a bunch of maybes, bro. He got a spades hands of weapons. He got one and a maybe, all right? So give him Travis Hunter. And I think that Travis Hunter, even though he does have his off the field stuff, he is also a guy who is ultra, ultra focused 
on football. And Deion Sanders has spoken to this as well. He's talked about how Travis Hunter is the epitome of a football player. And he's a straight A student. He ain't smoking. He ain't doing none of that stuff or getting drunk. He's a great human being. That's what's, that's what's been said about him by Deion Sanders. And from all accounts, you can see that Travis Hunter is a guy that's all about football. He's a regular human being. He, he seems like a very approachable, nice young man, a really, really mannerable young man. But he's all about football and the kid is an absolute gamer so i think i'm sold on travis hunter now if we were to get him or any of those other guys i just named i would be perfectly fine and i think at this point i'm starting to kind of fall in love with the idea of a travis hunter coming to dallas i just think that would be big time that would be something to be excited about even if we ain't that good <laughs> even if we ain't that good having a player like travis hunter will at least give you a reason to continue watching and that would bring some some excitement back to the dallas cowboys because this has been one of the most boring seasons i can remember watching in a very very long time just overall so i think those are the main reasons that cowboys fans should be super excited about tonight's game you get to see jonathan mingo you get to watch the game stress-free and actually be okay with the cowboys losing to the texans and getting boot stomped by the texans Just help us with our draft order maybe you'll make jerry make a move and, and 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 let and put mike out of his misery finally instead of making that man walk around dallas like a social pariah and now as fans, we just get to ex be excited about seeing how far we can drop down the draft boards, y'all. So that's what the Dallas Cowboys season is about now. And that's why Dallas Cowboys fans should be excited. I'm trying here, y'all. I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. This season sucks. And we stink. The same old cow. Calling me, texting me, paging me, asking me, am I still the ball? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still them boys. Hey! Hey! Woo! Oh, shut up, my boy. Hey! I'm still them boys.